What's up guys, Grimok here, and welcome to some Blender. Today I'm going to be showing you guys how to make a Minecraft 3D item in Blender. I'll probably leave an image on the screen showing you what the item will look like. So pretty much what you're going to have to do to do this is just obviously open up a brand new scene because what you're going to be making here is you're pretty much going to be making a library for all the objects you want to make. Um, you don't have to do this, you can just make this, this single item or you can make an entire library that you don't have to make it in something. So anyway. First thing you want to do is you're going to want to delete all the objects except for your basic cube. Because all we're going to be needing for this is this cube. So now what you want to do, is, since you just have this cube, you want to make sure you're in cycles render because all the textures and materials and everything will be for cycles mode. So if you want to do this in blender render, let me know in the comments down below and I might make a separate tutorial for that. So what you're going to want to do with this cube is you're going to push N scroll up here until you see the scale part and make sure you have the cube selected just by right clicking it so then what you want to do is you want to left click and drag down on this and that way it should select them all like this now i'm just going to make this the scale of 0.1 because this is going to be a single pixel of our weapon in reality this is actually going to be kind of big for our character but you can always scale it down in the future whenever you go to append it into your rig which i will be showing you how to do Okay, so now that the cube has been scaled down and everything, what I'm going to have you do is go ahead and push tab and go to edit mode. If you don't have this whole tab option here, I believe this is a Pi menus add-on, but either way, just go to file, user preferences, and I pretty much have every add-on except for the ones that have these little warning labels. So if you just want to copy my add-ons, just enable everything that doesn't have a warning sign and you'll be good. Alright, so now that you're in edit mode, I'm just going to have you push U and then reset. Um, make sure you have everything selected when you do this, so just push A a couple times until everything glows, and then just push you know, U and then reset, and you will be good. This is just for a future thing, we actually don't need this at this very moment, but you will need to do this at some point during this process. Okay, now that you have that done, just go ahead and go back into object mode. You can go ahead and close this out if you'd like. I'm gonna be opening up the node editor, so I'm just gonna take this and bring it up and then go to the bottom left where it has this little clock and go up to node editor. This is just going to make it very easy to set our nodes up and that way we can actually get the texture for our weapon. So what you want to do is you're going to want to right click and make sure your cube is selected. Then go over to this properties panel and push materials and then use nodes on this material. If there is no material and it's just like this, just push new material and you'll be fine. So now what you're, once you're in here, you should see this pop up in your node editor. Um, all you're going to need to do is you're going to need to push shift A, add a texture, image texture. So pretty much what this is going to do is this is going to let your actual object see the item that you're importing. I'll actually go into Z materials, or you can go down here and push this. And this way you'll actually see the texture once I put it on here. So I'm going to take this color property right here and put it into the diffuses color. So now as you can see everything just turned black. This is fine. This is because we don't have a texture on here right now. So if I actually go to preview it's probably going to, yeah it shows it as pink because that's just their default thing for saying there's no texture. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push open on image texture. I'm going to navigate to where I have all of my textures saved. I actually have an entire folder just for my textures, so if you guys want me to show you how to get all of the Minecraft textures from the game, just let me know and I'll make a separate video on that. It's rather simple and really fast to do. So I'm just going to import my sword texture. I'm just going to grab an iron sword, because why not? You can do this with any single texture in Minecraft. No matter what the size is, you're just going to have to pretty much make this grid that I'm going to be showing you how to make here in a second as big as you need it because the basic texture is a 16 by 16 grid of pixels. So now what you're going to do is you're going to want to come back down here to the node editor, push shift A, go to shader, and then add a mix shader. You're just going to want to take this and put it right between the diffuse and the material output and once it has this little glow here, just left click and it should put it right on in there and just move everything out. If it doesn't, then just connect it how this is right here and you'll be fine. Pretty much what a mix shader is, is it lets you mix two shaders together with a certain factor. You can either slide it or put a different factor in, such as what I'm about to show you, which is we're going to take the image textures alpha and click left click and drag it into the factor. Now you're going to see everything turn transparent 
this is fine. Um, nothing to worry about here. It will be fine in a second. I'm also going to go ahead to the image texture and right below where it says color where it has this linear, click on that and change it to closest. This will pretty much remove any blurriness you might have, which I will show you here in a second and actually here. Uh, I'm going to go to rendered mode, but it's not going to show anything until after I add this next part. So what I'm going to have you do is push shift A, shader, and then add a transparent shader. Pretty much what this transparent shader is going to do is it going to it's going to take the transparency option, which here I will sh open up my UV image editor to show you what I mean. Uh, UV image editor and iron sword. Okay, so as you can see, there are these little checkers back here, and this is the transparency. So this is what you don't want your item to show, but you do want it to show the actual texture. So what this is going to do is you're going to take the factor of that transparency into here, and that's going to be what makes this transparent and keep the color. If you guys don't understand, it's fine. I can make a node tutorial later on. So just take this transparency, put it into the top shader, and now you can see your item. Now if you were to take this off of closest and put it back to linear, you'll just have it blurry. So if you have that problem, just make sure this is set to closest. Alright, so now that all of our node editing is done, what you're going to do is you can just close out of this node editor. I'm just going to leave it down here for now. And make sure you have your UV image editor open because you're going to need this for this next part. So what you want to do is you want to go into edit mode on this cube. So just tab and then edit mode or you can go down here. And what you want to do is you want to make sure you have everything selected. I'm going to go to face select mode just to make everything easier. And I'm going to scale everything down in here to the size of a single pixel. So. This way we can just make sure that this is a one pixel wide because this cube is only one pixel and we're going to be making this a 16 by 16. So now that I have it set to one pixel, just for safety precautions because sometimes it likes to select a little bit of the pixel next to it, I'm going to be pushing scale 0.5. Normally you can go anywhere from 1 to like 0.1, it doesn't really matter. You can actually leave it how it was if you don't mind. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is now I'm going to push G, hold down the control button or command if you're on Mac, I believe, and then you can just move this around and it's going to lock on to the next pixel over. I'm just going to put this in the top left corner because we're going to be making the 16 by 16 grid as I said. So I want to go to top view with by pushing 7 on the numpad. Then put 5 on the numpad, that way it goes into orthographic view. I'm not sure how you do this without using the numpad, um, you're going to have to look that up for your personal computer. So now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push shift D, make sure you're in edit mode, just push shift D and hold control, that way it drags over to the next part. Just make sure it snaps right there next to it. Then I'm going to left click. And now as you can see I have two pixels. And I'm just going to come in here in the image editor and do the same thing. So I'm going to push G and then control and then drag it over one. If you want to see the other pixels, you can push this little button down here. It's like a mouse pointing at a box with two vertices. So then you have both of these showing. Now I'm just going to do the same thing, but I'm going to make sure everything is selected when I do it. Then do it again. Oops, did not mean to go like that. So now I have four and I'm just going to do the same thing. G and then control. Make sure you do not push A in here while doing it or else you will mess up and you'll have to like push control Z to go back. So now just keep duplicating these until you get as many pixels as you need. Um, I, as I said, going to go to 16 wide by 16. Alright, so as you can see I went over a bit. This is fine because all you need to do to delete these extra bits is you can just go box select inside the image editor and then go over all the parts that went over. Once you've done this, just come back over here to the 3D uh, view, push X and then just delete faces. And now you're just fine. So there you go. Now you have this beautiful little kind of plane that you can use to put any single image texture on it and it will work perfectly for all items. Now, what you're going to do to actually take this item out of our mesh, I'm actually going to duplicate this because you're going to want one of these later, so I'd recommend you do this too. 
I'm going to push Control Shift Alt C, and that's going to pop up this menu. Push Origin to Geometry. That way, it just kind of aligns. I'm going to push Shift S and cursor to center, then Shift S again and push Select in this cursor. Cursor. So now it's just centered, and everything should be fine. Okay. So, as I said, I'm going to duplicate this and then move it to another layer. Just do whatever you'd like there. You don't have to duplicate it if you don't want to. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push Tab and go back into edit mode. And now, as you can see, we have our sword texture. It's all nice and pretty. Now what you're going to do is you're going to want to go up here to the UV image editor and you're going to want to push C to get your circle select. You can actually do this in 3D view if you'd like. I'll do it in both just for example. And you're just going to want to select all of the faces that are white or transparent. And remember, the transparent parts are these little checkered patterns in the background. So you can do it, as I said, in either 3D or in the UV image editor. As you can see, I messed up here. So if you mess up, just middle mouse click and you'll be fine. I'm not sure what you need to push if you don't have a mouse. Alright, so I went ahead and got all the items selected, but as you can see, if you do it in the 3D view, the other side does not get selected. This is fine because all you need to do is push Control L. So this will select any connecting faces that are with it. So this way you don't have to worry about selecting any other boxes because if you do, you will notice it because it will select it also. Now we have this done. We can either move this off to the side and just kind of have that there and you can do whatever you want or we can delete it, which is what I'm gonna do. So now we just have this sword, which is actually all ready to render. You can do whatever you want to it. Here, let me put some ambient occlusion on so you can see better. We have the sword, it's all ready. You can just do this if you want. All right, so I'm also gonna show you a few other tricks that you can do with this sword. Pretty much what you can do is you can select a couple of the pixels that you want to extrude. I'm just gonna grab these metal ones, for example. And then you can push Control L to make sure you get the other side as well. Then you can scale it up. So pretty much what this does is it just adds a little bit more depth to your items. So if you wanted, you could always go ahead and like select all these parts. And this way you could just have a really detailed looking sword. And it'll be a lot better looking than most of your um, flatter ones. So for example, would you prefer this or the flat one? Because I'd personally prefer looking at this versus the other one, but in some cases you'd never really notice. So it's all personal preference and up to you. Um, it's just an option. So another thing you might notice is this has a lot of vertices. In order to fix how many vertices you have, you're just going to go ahead and go to edit mode, press A, T, that way you open this up, and now you can push remove doubles. This is just under the tools tab in mesh tools. So just push remove doubles and it should remove all the extra vertices that are touching. If it does something really weird like this, for example, um, just hover over the merge distance, which will be in this little plus thing if it doesn't showing right here. And then right click, reset to default value. So then you are all set. And also, if you want to take it one more step, you can also remove all the tiny faces that are inside of it that were left over. In order to do that, just select everything, take out your little circle select tool, and just hold middle click while rotating your camera view every once in a while, and just get all the faces that are physically visible. So I went ahead and done this, and now as you can see, there's still these little outlines that you just can't seem to get rid of. Now this is perfect because what we're going to be doing is we're going to be removing all those faces that are inside that we can't actually see. So just push X and delete faces. And as you can see, nothing's changed, but we have reduced faces by quite a bit, like let's see, 128 extra faces. So this will help speed up your render time just a little bit, not a whole lot unless you have a lot of items in the scene. That is pretty much how you make the item, and now I'm going to show you how to import it into your scene. Alright, so now I'm going to be showing you guys how to import your new item into your scene. So what you're going to do is push File, go down to Append, and then navigate to wherever you saved your new item. In my case, I saved it under this little library. I'd recommend you guys do this, that way you just have a library of items that you can import at any point in time. This is actually not going to be the exact same sword. I believe this is actually a diamond sword in here. But either way, it doesn't matter. All the same difference. 
So that is how you append it. As you can see, I have this one all 3D and awesomeness. So then you can just move it over your character, you know, do whatever you want. It'll look beautiful and everything will be perfect. So anyway, thanks so much for watching guys. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to leave a like and make sure to tell me the, down below what you want me to make a tutorial on next because that's always helpful to know what you guys need. So anyway, thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.